part five, front having this 330 mile an hour top fuel dragster. I've got all the four rails mounted in place and I've got the front end attached. Now nothing's welded. And what I'm doing now is I'm adjusting where I want these main rails to land. It's kind of like building a house. You're going from the bottom up. So what I do is I use my laser level and I've got this thing shot straight down the middle. I've got my plumb rob hung, hanging down here on my center line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height of these lower rails at each section where I'm going to actually have a cross member. And how I do that is I have a straight edge going across here. And I have this little simple uh, height mic that I use. And I put the edge of that height mic right on that laser line. And then I'll go to the other rail. And I'll see how far off. I am. Now, I can measure this down to the thousands. Yeah, probably plus or minus 10 or 20, something like that. But, I mean, it's pretty damn close. Now, I'll do this at every point that I'm going to have a cross member or an upright, you know, that's going to support these top rails. Now, according to the chassis specs, we have to have an upright at every 34 inches using this configuration. So what I'll do is I've marked the lower rail every 34 inches. So I just use, again, a plumb bob, and then I just hang that and match it up to the bottom. And I know that that's my upright's going to be attached to my top rails um, perfectly straight if I measure it this way. Now, this is a Mittler Brothers uh, tubing notcher. Uh, also, some people call it coping. But anyway, so this cutter that's being used right here is the diameter of the lower rail. So I'm going to be using this to cope that shape of that pipe, which is round, and it's just notching this thing out. As soon as it comes off the notcher, I'll run it over here to my belt sander real quick and just knock the edges off of it. And that way, so I have a nice... Uh, edge that solid pipe and not maybe just you know where it's sharpened up by the notcher itself it just disappears if you go to weld it that way you know this is my like third year for actually having a notcher like this before i've always had the whole saw version and even before that i just really uh went over to a belt sander and just tried to notch it out as best as i could you know but this does save a lot of time so once i get the upright close and get it in the position where i want I'll measure that top rail now and make sure that it is completely, you know, perpendicular with that lower rail. So wherever I have a cross member, I'll go ahead and use that same uh, measuring style as I did on the lower rails. That way I'm keeping these things square the whole length uh, of that top fuel front. You have to look at it like this. This lower rail, they are supporting the top rails. Now, they're going to work together, of course, as they're going down the old track here. But, you know, I built this thing like a bridge. This lower rail is very important because that is the basement to this uh, whole structure and the way that it's going to uh, respond when you hit the gas. Also, when it's coming back down on deceleration, this lower rail is really important. So I'll just do one section at a time. I always start from the cage area and work my way uh, to the front. So I'll go ahead and I have a kind of a cool way of measuring things. Um, you know, after the years of doing this and all that kind of thing, I have this one tape measure I use. Um, basically, it's an old Stanley chrome metal tape measure. And what I do is I'll take that thing and I'll pull it straight up to where I'm going to have my cross member or my upright. And then what I'll do is I'll add to whatever that measurement number is, I'll add three and a quarter inches to it. Now that will be my overall number for the piece of tubing that I'm going to cut. So basically this is how it worked. So it came out to like what, six and 625 plus three and 250. So we're going to come out to nine, eight, 75. That's the length of pipe that I'm going to need. And that's what I'm going to start with anyway. So I'll cut that pipe to exactly that. I'll cope each end. And I'll tell you what, I'll be within a 16th of an inch or so after that's happening. So I'll come back and just, you know, reevaluate it. But I mean, it's pretty damn close most of the time. Okay, so onto this one area. So where the fuel tank sets, there's not going to be a cross member that goes across the lower rails. So, you know, per the spec, you have to have, uh, you know, a sleeve on top of it. It can either be floating on one end or, or welded or whatever. But the way I like to do it is I like to have the lower one actually solid and the top one actually be able to float a little bit. 
So I got it in place, I made my measurement, made my cross member, and guess what? Yep, you're right, it was pretty damn close. Now, I have cut a couple of these things here on this car that weren't so close. And it's just because what? I was distracted. That's all there is to it. Wasn't paying attention. You know, I'm kind of like that guy who sees a squirrel or something shiny. Yeah, I have that issue. You know, another simple way too is like when you want to get your uh, notching, you know, index just right, use another piece of pipe on the other side where you indexed it and you can take a look and get that level. That way you're just sitting there not having to, you know, kind of estimate like where it's turned or whatever. Just put a piece of pipe on it, man. Take a look at it. Is it horizontal, vertical, whatever angle it's going to be, you can actually measure it. Now there's one cross member that's on this thing where the outlet of the fuel tank is, it actually is dropped down a little bit. So the cross member can't be straight. If not, then the fuel line will run right into it. So anyway, so you got to make one that's got a little bit of a bend to it. So I know I'm doing two or three different cars here. So I'll make up two or three of these things and get those all uh, notched up because they'll be really close. You can kind of see here how that one's bent. So pretty much after this, you know, it's just a matter of putting in uh, all the rest of these sections. So some of these cross members, what they do is they actually run into an upright and they also run into a lower rail. So there's two different operations that you're coping on these things. So I got most of the uh, cross members and everything made up. So I'll go through and I'll take all those out. And then I'm gonna actually drill a hole on one side uh, where the actual tube is going to be. So if you weren't uh, didn't have these holes in there. It actually pressurizes that um, tube as you're welding it. And then what does it do next? It has a blowhole. So the pressure that it makes inside that tube has nowhere to go. And so then you're welding along and all of a sudden it just blows that molted metal, that area right there back at you. So I'll just go ahead and finish uh, getting all these things tacked in place and making sure that they're in the exact right spot that they need to be. Uh, you know, I've done that one time. I was an inch off. You know, sometimes you always grab, you know, the start with the one inch mark on your tape measure and you got 34 in your mind and you go 34. Well, guess what? The sucker was 33 inches. So anyway, you just need to double check it because once you weld it on, you can cut it back out. But it's <laughs> it's kind of rough on the material once you do that. So these here are some turnbuckles that I've made. Uh, this just helps me keep the spacing and things uh, on the pipe whether it be vertical or horizontal, whatever it may need at the time when you're welding this thing up, just kind of holds it in place as you're going along welding this thing. So on this next video that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be welding this all up and we're gonna be going at a little bit faster pace. And I'm telling you what, I'm gonna end this thing with part six. There's so much crap that you have to do on these things. I could sit here and talk about this damn thing for a week. We need to get onto a new project. Um, but I want you to see all the steps that are going to be going on on this next video. Just stay tuned. It's going to be cool. Thanks for watching, you guys.